In today's video, I'm going to show you the basics to creating a composite in Photoshop. Creating an image from scratch in Photoshop can seem quite overwhelming because there's just so much stuff to know. And it's basically impossible to know every single thing from the very get-go. At least if you're trying to create something like this. But if you just stick to creating something very simple, it really isn't that hard. There's only a few things that you need to know. Eight simple steps, to be exact. <laughs> Sounds a little more doable. I agree. <laughs> and just a little disclaimer, I'm just a self-taught artist. I haven't been taught by some professional how to do this stuff. I'm just doing it the way I find it easy to do and the way that has worked for me in the past. And there's probably a million different ways of doing it and this is just one of the ways it works for me so it might as well work for you. So this is the photo that I'm gonna create and all you really need to create a photo similar to this is a background, a photo of a person that you want to photoshop into the background and then you need photoshop as well or just any editing program that can do similar stuff to Photoshop. I just use Photoshop because it's easy. It is a little bit expensive, so if you can find a cheaper option, I'm sure it will work as well. So the first step is to open up the background in Camera Raw. If you set your image in Raw, it will automatically open up in Camera Raw when you open it in Photoshop. And I would seriously recommend anyone to shoot in Raw because you just have a lot more information to work with. If you're not shooting in Raw right now, go switch it. And yes, you also can shoot in Raw on your phone. I actually already have made a video on that, so go check that out afterwards. If the shooting on your phone, it might be helpful. We're opening it up in Camera Raw so that we can start out by editing the raw colors and contrast and, you know, highlights and shadows and all that stuff. So the first thing I usually do is that I head, or head over to my presets that I've made earlier just by editing a photo and if I've made something that I really like, I save it as a preset. I just go through all my presets until I find something that I think fits my photo. And sometimes I just edit it from scratch as well, but this is a faster way. So for this one, I ended up on the preset that I decided to call minimalism because I think it looks very pretty with the very soft, but kind of like, bam, <laughs> colors. Um, and I really like that for this photo. But I can see from the beginning that it's way too bright. So I'm going over to the adjustments and just adjusting that so that it fits to the photo. And you really have to do this with every single preset because it's not made exactly for that photo so you can't just put it on and you're done, you would still have to adjust it. You have something to start from and then you can work from that. And once it looks fine, click open and it will open in Photoshop. Step number two. Now we just need the person in the frame. So I'm heading over to Finder to find the photo that I knew that I wanted to place into this background. And then I'm just dragging it onto the Photoshop document. And once again, if you shut it in RAW, it will automatically open in Camera RAW. And you can then put on the exact same preset so that it matches the background. And then I'm just doing the exact same thing by adjusting the colors. And I really think the colors look quite ugly on, on the subject here, so I adjusted the colors quite a lot just to make it look a little more natural. And once you're finished, click open and it will just open automatically in the very same Photoshop document that you opened your background into. I usually figure out where I want the person to be in the frame first, then I cut her out and then I finally go and actually place her in the right spot. So I think I want her to sit right here on the cliff where it kind of looks like a person could actually sit there. Then I go to the left hand side of Photoshop and select the quick selects tool <laughs> and then I just roughly mark out the body and it will kind of automatically select where Photoshop sees some harsh line. So if your image is very clear and with maybe a colored background or green screen or something, it will be very easy to do this, but my background is white and <laughs> there's a white dress, so it doesn't really work that well. But once the body is selected, you click this button right here called layer mask. This will create a mask just around the, the area that you selected and only 
things that you've selected will be visible. And then to adjust, you make sure that the layer mask is selected, not the actual layer, but the thing to the right of the layer called the layer mask. And then you go over once again to the left hand side with the tools and you select the brush tool. And now you can actually just go over the lines of the body and paint everything away. And in this case, it's pretty much just around the whole body. If you accidentally painted away too much, you can go over here and switch to white and it will paint in whatever you painted away that was too much or something. Um, so yeah, you can always switch between black and white and black will remove and white will add. So you can just go back and forth. Fourth step is to create some shadows. Shadows are really what's going to make your photo look realistic because right now it just looks like a background and another photo on top of it and that's not really what we want. We want it to look like one merged photo. And once we start putting on the shadows, the photos will really blend together and that's what we want! First you really want to examine where the light is coming from because obviously if the light is coming from here and my hand is here, the shadow will go that way, if that makes sense. So you really want to examine where the light is coming from. And for this photo, it's really taken in very bright daylight, so there isn't really any harsh shadows because the light is really coming from many directions and filling in in different areas and stuff, but there's always one primary source of light, I think. So here you can see just very subtle that the primary source of light is coming from the right side of the frame. So because the light is coming from the right side of the frame, we want to create a slight shadow on the left side of the girl, just behind the girl. So to create the shadows, you go down and create a levels layer and you make sure that it's right between the background layer and the layer with the subject the girl because the levels layer will only affect everything that's underneath it so if the subject is on top it won't affect her so if you double click the levels layer you can adjust it and i'm going to pull down the highlights quite a lot because in shadows there's not really highlights basically just making it darker then i'm actually deleting the layer mask and you do this by dragging it down to the bin and then i'm hitting option while i'm pressing a new layer mask so by clicking option while you press the layer mask, you're creating kind of like a reversed mask layer where it's all black. So you can just paint in wherever you want the shadow to be. If you didn't do this, it would just affect the whole image and you'd have to delete everything that you didn't want to be in shadow, which at least for this photo is quite a lot. So it's easier to just remove everything and then painting it in where you want it to be. A quick rule of thumb that I use almost every single time I create a shadow is that the closer the subject is to the surface, the smaller the shadow has to be. To explain what I mean, let's look at this dress for example. You can see some places the dress is actually almost touching the cliff and it isn't natural that there's a big shadow underneath that because there isn't really any space for it. But in the areas where the dress is kind of flowing, we're um, able to create kind of like a bigger shadow. Maybe try to put your hand on the table and look. Do you see any shadows? Yeah, I see a small shadow, a little shadow. Now try raising the hand from the table just a few centimeters. Do you see a shadow now? Is the shadow bigger? It is, right? <laughs> now the fifth step is to crop your image if you haven't done it already. Use the rule of thirds here, it will help you a lot. And it's this grid that shows automatically when you choose to crop your photo in Photoshop. And a quick explanation is just that you want your subject to be either right in the middle of the center square or you want your subject to be right where the lines cross each other. So the sixth step is to clean it up. And it's basically just every small little steps that will just make your photo a little bit better. And this is actually where I use the clone stamp tool a lot to just remove everything that doesn't really add to the photo. And in this case, I'm removing a lot of trees. I love the trees that's in the foreground because I think it just doesn't really look that good. And then I'm removing some of the dark patches in the ocean just to remove any distractions. I also create another levels layer I, and actually just do the same as I did when creating shadows 
but then creating highlights instead. Because as we talked about, the light is coming from the right side of the frame, so we kind of want the light to uh, light up the body as well as the cliff is lit up, just to make it look more natural. So I create a selective colors layer and I just go through every single color and adjust it to how I like it. There isn't really any rules or much to it, I'm just experimenting and going with what I think looks good. I could honestly talk for hours about colors because I love colors so much and I think it's so interesting how you can manipulate colors to look good together and to evoke different feelings and I actually already have a video um, on color theory but if you would like me to make a video on how I edit color and stuff like that I would be very happy to make it to just let me know in the comments below but yeah just going through every single color and seeing what I like. So the final step is basically where I make it all come together and do the final adjustments and all that jazz. So the first thing I do is that I take all the layers that I've created, which is actually not that many for this photo because it is very simple, but if you're creating something way more complicated, you do the same thing, every single layer into one group and then you duplicate that group and then you take one of the groups and you merge the layers you do this because when you merge all the layers it will act as just one simple layer and you can't really go back and edit in the individual layers but that's why we duplicated it and when we have one merged layer which is basically just one layer now we can apply a camera raw filter on top of it and in here you really just as i said want to make the final few adjustments so first i'm just making the photo a little brighter and kind of just going through some of the tabs that i think could add something to the photo and just seeing and i'm really not changing a lot and then i'm also making it just a little bit more desaturated because it is a lot of colors and there is a lot going on with the color so so having it too bright will kind of be a little bit overwhelming maybe to look at so just desaturating it a little bit and then i created a very subtle tone curve just to add a little bit of contrast into the photo and it's really not a lot because I like my photo to look a little bit minimalistic actually so having too much contrast will kind of move away from that minimalistic style so really just a little bit of contrast and then I went into the color mixer to adjust the colors once again yes I know we've already <laughs> adjusted the colors twice but we're doing it again because I really do think that colors are the one thing that really can change your photos like if you've got your colors right your photo is pretty much guaranteed to be great at least I'm gonna like it and then I add some grain just because I think it looks cool and it kind of hides some of the rough edges and make them look cool instead of just like a bad photo and finally I went to the calibration section and tried to play a little bit with that but I actually ended up doing nothing with it because I thought it looked better without it and I think that's a sign that my image was getting to a point where it was as good as I could make it and then finito there you have it a very simple composite it really doesn't have to be that complicated it is as complicated as you make it and you really can create cool stuff without like having to know every single corner of photoshop because i think that's <laughs> impossible almost so yeah i'm just using the basics let me know what your aha moment from this video was at least if you had any i hope you did i hope you learned just one thing that would be pretty nice and if you liked the video please give it a like and remember to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the little bell to be notified every single time i post a new video which is twice a week at least for now. I'm trying to make it twice a week and I'm succeeding so far. So yeah, hit the bell button. And until next time, bye.